my name is Gwen Bray. Uh, that's actually my real name, by the way. It is my real name. Um, and I just got to Dayton, Ohio. Are most of you guys locals? Yeah. Yeah. Most of you guys lived here your whole life? Yeah. Okay, what do you guys think of it? Oh, it's, it's something. It's something? Yeah. It exists. Yeah, we're here. Oh, uh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, I, I actually don't live that far from here. But where I live, there's like, there's really a lot of uh, prostitutes. Does anyone else have that going on? Well, uh, what building is that? I think that's why, uh, you know, I meet prostitutes all the time. I think that's why they call it High Ohio. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I get it. So, uh, anyway, so uh, wh where I was yesterday, uh, uh, I was at a mechanic shop and I saw what is referred to as toxic masculinity. I'm going to paint a scene for you, okay? Uh, it's hot and sweaty. Uh, my friend is like an old man who's, who should be retired, but he's too poor to retire, so he's still working on cars, right? Okay, so, uh, but he couldn't do the job himself, and he knew he couldn't do the job himself, so he asked one of his younger, 45-year-old male friends to come help him. So they're drinking, it's hot. When I first come over there, I gotta be honest, uh, you know, he, 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 he shouldn't be on the ground, he's all sweaty, he looks like a big old fat pig. And then Bill got like, he got this huge ass, right? You know how women get older and they wanna cut their tits off because it's just too much work and too heavy, gravity works against them. Like he has, he has one of those big old asses where gravity just is really working against him. And uh, like, so when he was trying to get up, off the floor, he literally had to like flip around, okay? Because he had to get the butt up first, he had to get the heavy part up first. Uh, anyways, long story short, the car ended up coming down on his head because his friend wanted to get the job done. And he's pumping up the jack. And even though uh, there's a person under there, he's too big in a hurry to be like, dude, move out from under the car. So this car comes smashing down on this old man's head who's already struggling. And instead of saying, hey man, you all right? Can I help you out? This is when the toxic masculinity starts. Oh, stop crawling, bitch, we got a car fix! Stuff like that. And then and then I was like, hey, hey, he was already having a hard time. Y'all need to y'all need to relax. And then they'd be like, hey, you shut up over there, ain't no one talking to you, lady. Shouldn't you be cleaning or something? Like I'm so for real. Like this is when all the toxic masculinity starts. I'm like, and, and, and then you know, like the, my community, the world I live in out here, it's like just because I got a job, everyone thinks I'm not a lady, I don't act like a lady. Which is, that's part of toxic masculinity. Like I live in a world where men don't work. I do, I live, like, I live in a world where people are on food stamps in section eight. So, it, it, so they don't work. So if you have any kind of job, you're like, you're going against the grain. And uh, because the only thing they want you to do where I live is they basically want you to be a hoe. They like to diminish women into hoe class right away as part of toxic masculinity. So when my car broke down, uh, it was like the scariest day of my life because a bunch of the local men came around me. I wasn't asking them for help. And I wasn't asking them for their opinion, but they came around me. They're like, sweetie, I know how to fix everything. I'm like, how? They're like, we're gonna take you up to that truck stop. <laughs> I ain't going to no truck stop, but they was for real. They was trying to pin me out, and uh, they're like, you know, make lots of money up there. You gonna split it with me? They were so confident about trying to make me one of their hoes. It's crazy. They were real confident about it. They're like, you gonna give me half of your money, and you're gonna smile about it. And they're like, they're kind of for real, you know. And then you know, if I defend myself, which happens a lot, I'm always a villain. I'm always the bad guy because I live in toxic masculinity world. Over there, I'm for real. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up. And uh, but I will say, what one of the funniest things I thought I heard someone say, and then you know, trying to pimp me out, is they're like, "Come on, I'll help you make money." I was like, "No, nah, I hear the girls out here work way too cheap for you guys." And I, I, I hear you be giving them like a twenty and a ten out here. And he was like, "Yep, yeah, and sometimes too." I'm serious though. It, it's a problem. It's a problem. It ain't funny. Okay. <laughs> So, I, 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 uh, are y'all listening to me? <laughs> it just ain't funny. It's more interesting than funny. But, um, okay, so another thing that happened is when I, I came back to America, I, I, had to, I had to get a car, right? Because I didn't have a car. Now, my name is Lion Brave. I used to work in China. That's, uh, that's true. 
I was playing uh, Two Truths and a Lie. That's, that's, that's true. I used to live in China. So when I first got back, I was pissed off because everyone was telling me their COVID story. And their COVID story sounded amazing. They're like, man, I haven't gone to work in six months. I'm making double the money. Like, I was like, what? And everyone was like telling me their COVID story. And it was like the most amazing shit I've ever heard in my life. They're like, you know, I've been sitting on the couch watching Netflix for the last five months, and my bank account has improved dramatically. I was like, like a lot of people's lives got better during COVID. I came back to America with no unemployment, and I got kicked out. They literally canceled my visa. They threw me back to America. I literally came back with basically the clothes on my back. Okay, my COVID story was a real shit show. I lost everything. I couldn't even get into my bank accounts. Okay, so imagine what it was like coming back to here where people were actually making double the money in income. They're telling me how hard their life is, how, how COVID affected them so much. I'm like, y'all got to stay home with your kids for the first time. Y'all got to think about your hopes, wishes, and dreams. Y'all got to start some businesses. Like, I, I saw that a lot of people started doing extremely well during COVID because they were getting paid to stay home. They are getting unemployment and they had more time for themselves than ever. So, uh, anyways, yeah, I, I uh, uh, shoot. Uh, I think I'm, I've been on stage for longer than five minutes. Y'all supposed to boo me off and get the hook already. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Line break.